Sometimes an idea just slaps you in the face. I was about to throw this empty egg package away when I noticed the bottom had some interesting shapes. Science fiction even. Time for experiments. The plastic is really thin and brittle and there's no way it will survive a game. However, it will work just fine as a mold. Now, plaster of Paris and resin both throw out a lot of heat when they're curing, which is likely to melt or warp the plastic. Instead, I went for regular wall filler. I used the powder one rather than the ready mixed, so I could control the uh, amount of water. To get them to cure faster and hopefully strengthen them a little, I mixed 77% filler and split the difference between water and acrylic paint. This still took a while to dry, but I was able to demold them within the day. The mix also produced surprisingly few bubbles. Unfortunately, I still wasn't able to demold them in one piece, but that's okay since the plan was to cut up the individual domes anyway. I also had to tear up the packaging to get to them, but you can't make a promethium reactor without breaking a few eggs. At this point, I had no idea what to make with them, beyond the uh, sci-fi thing. The shape lends itself to anything from escape pods to habitations to furnaces. So let me know in the comments what you would make with these. In the end, I decided to go with glowy science fiction eating number 27. After all, in some sci-fi settings like Warhammer 40k, you have a bunch of machines from the dark age of technology still chugging along and no one knows what they are or what they're doing. To hide the markings on the top, I filled the hole with baking powder and some drops of super glue. This creates a rough pile which I can paint like uh, material burning inside the machine. For the base, I pulled a few tricks from N-Scale Dystopia. I'm just monkeying on what he does in his channel, so you should really check that out if you want to see this in more detail. The base is a circle of XPS foam glued on top of a CD. I cut a slope into this and sliced a whole lot of cuts on one side. Then, I scraped away at it to create a rock face. Depending on how aggressively you work here, you can get a whole lot of different textures. Next, I melted away some parts of the foam with polystyrene cement to represent parts of the ground that had collapsed. To make the base look more industrial and give me something to glue the thingy to, I made a sheet of filler. Then I spread the tacky glue over the foam and pulled the sheet on it. This will crack the sheet and you'll get these nice broken slabs you can super glue the thingy to. From here on out, I just added bits of junk I had lying around. Wires, some pieces from an old lighter, and some bits of plastic from something or other. You can use anything with an interesting shape here. The rubble piles are just chips of plaster from some of my earlier casts and baking powder. Once I had them in place, I just locked them in with super glue. Everything was undercoated in PVA and black paint and the exposed dirt was coated with a mix of PVA, black paint and baking powder. Next up, I sprayed the whole thing grey. You will notice the black bit on top. That's because I dropped the piece like the Muppet I am, and I had to fill in a chip with more baking powder and paint, so it looks like it's spilling over now. My mistake is no texture. I started by painting the bubbly stuff and the wires white. Here I used white acrylic diluted with white ink. These would get a glow effect later, and a vibrant base is 90% of the job. All the metallic parts were painted brown, and everything else was dry brushed grey. And since it's not proper grimdark if there aren't any hazard stripes, this little trapdoor got base coated in yellow and carefully striped. Next up, I threw down some brown washes on the rocks and the ground. This is one of my favorite ways of painting rock, and you can see it in more detail in my Dwarven Scatter Terrain video. Just let the washes dry, then drop a black wash on all the industrial bits and a paints grey wash on all the earth and rock. The glow effect is easier than it looks. I started by dry brushing the white with yellow and phthalo green in several layers. This is the reverse of what a dry brush usually does, as we want the deepest areas to look brighter. I also went heavier with this pill to make it look darker, like it's cooling off. 
The rim of the glow also got a slightly darker version of the same colors, so it looks like it's being lit by the glow. As does this little tower here. There is really nothing complicated here and a solid base coat and good lighting are what's really carrying the effect here. The metal areas got buffed with an HB pencil. The graphite gives a metallic sheen that I really like. This was still looking too clean though, so I broke out the chalk pastels. This is something I've been wanting to try for some time. I scraped the powder of the pastels and applied it with a brush. Verdict, this stuff is magic. It really makes the piece look dusty. After a couple of coats of varnish, this piece is done and it turned out excellent, if I say so myself. Now that it's complete, I can see it would be a gang's asparagus boiler in a Chromunda or maybe a leak reactor in Games of Epic. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video and found something useful in it. If you want to see more content, check out this playlist right here or visit my Patreon page, linked in the description. Bye!